Hello, Mighty Companions. This is Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles. And we're going to get down in what the Course in Miracles says, and we're going to see the easiest way to have happiness. What's the way that, to have happiness and joy and abundance and peace that's guaranteed and it's completely within your reach. How can you have that happiness and joy and peace that you want right now according to A Course in Miracles? That's what we're going to talk about. That's what we're going to do. And I want you to keep in mind that one of the most important things for you to remember is your happiness comes from you. Your peace is going to come from you, and I'm going to show you how to do it from A Course in Miracles. Your happiness and your abundance and your peace comes from you. Your freedom comes from you. Your peace, happiness, joy, it all comes from you. But how do you do that? How do you achieve that? How do you get to that point that you are experiencing that happiness from a course in miracles perspective? But that is exactly what we are going to do today. <clears throat> so take a deep breath, take a deep breath, mighty companions. Take a deep breath, and we're going to get into Lesson 70 in A Course in Miracles, in the Course in Miracles workbook. We are going to get into what is the lesson? How do we have happiness? How do we get that happiness that comes from us? It's on page 119. Page 119 in the blue Course in Miracles book, the Foundation for Inner Peace version. Lesson 70, page 119 in the Course in Miracles workbook. The Course in Miracles, of course, is three books in one. It's a text, it's a, it's a workbook, and it's a manual for teachers all in one book. And so we're in the workbook, and we're going to do the se Lesson 70, My Salvation Comes From Me. A Course in Miracles teaches that salvation is your right-mindedness. It's another term for your happiness, for your joy, for, for love. Do you know that the Course in Miracles is only talking about love? The Course of Miracles is only talking about how you can experience only love and only joy and only peace and only happiness and only oneness. It is possible. But how do you get to the point that you do that? Well, to hear what the Course of Miracles is saying, all you need to remember is that you need not believe the ideas. You don't have to believe the ideas that I'm going to share with you from A Course in Miracles. You don't have to accept the ideas that I'm going to give you from A Course in Miracles. You don't even need to welcome these ideas. Some of these ideas, you may actively resist some of these ideas. Some of these ideas you may find hard to believe. Some of these ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of these ideas might startle you. Some of these ideas might startle you. Do you know that you are not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all? It's their use that will give the ideas meaning to you. It's their use that will show you that the ideas are true. Analyzing the cause of miracles will not <sighs> allow you to really see and experience the benefits and the happiness that Course in Miracles is promising you. I'm the divine repetition teacher. I am your remembering coach. I have been a teacher and a student of A Course in Miracles over 42 years. So what I want to do is make your journey, in, in whatever way I can, help make your journey to happiness and peace through A Course in Miracles a lot easier for you. Okay? So we're going to be on page 119, Lesson 70, in A Course in Miracles workbook, My Happiness, My Salvation Comes From Me. I'm so excited to be with you. It feels so good to get an opportunity to focus on God and to focus on the truth and focus on spirit in a brand new way with people who also want to learn and grow and experience happiness in a brand new way. So do you know that the first, we're going to do it together. So if you got your Course in Miracles workbook lesson, then we can do this together, okay? I'm glad to see you online. I'm glad to see you here with me. You are a blessing. So, do you know that all temptation is nothing more than some form of the basic temptation not to believe the idea that your right-mindedness, your happiness, your peace comes from you? So, so what is that? What is the Course in Miracles telling me? Well, it's telling you that the only temptation that you might be going through, one of the temptations you might be going through is the temptation, is the temptation to not believe 
that your happiness comes from you, that your peace comes from you, that love comes from you, that everything that really matters, your right-mindedness comes from you. Sometimes people don't like to hear that and they act like that's some, some, some kind of a negative or a bad thing. I don't know about you, but one of the goals that I'm working on after all these years of, of, of studying and teaching A Course in Miracles is to, as little as possible, make anything about my peace or happiness have anything to do with what anybody else says or does. Because if you can allow yourself to experience that happiness and joy that comes from inside you, and it doesn't have anything to do with how much money you make, where do you live, what kind of car you drive, whether somebody else is being the way you want them to be, if you are able to tap that part of you that could give you total bliss and joy, and it has nothing to do with anything outside of yourself, now you're moving in the right direction. And this section is going to tell us how to do that. Now, now the Course says salvation seems to come from anywhere except from you. Uh, it looks like your happiness, your peace, your innocence, your abundance. Sometimes it seems like it comes from anybody and anywhere except you. And it also seems like the source of guilt comes from everywhere but you. Do you know that the Course teaches us that guilt is the cause of all unhappiness, even if we don't recognize it? So I'm not necessarily saying things to you that you are going to necessarily agree with or recognize. Because if you really recognize what was causing your unhappiness in any situation, if you really recognize what was causing your unhappiness, you would also recognize what you would need to get rid of the unhappiness. So if you're unhappy, sad, in lack, sick in any kind of way, and you're not feeling good right now, then the Course of Miracles would say you don't really recognize that the source of your guilt and your anger and your unhappiness is also coming from within your own mind. So the Course says we don't even see that our, our guilt or our happiness as being in our own mind and nowhere else. So guilt, anger, separation, grievances, do you know that they're in your mind and nowhere else? I know it looks like it's being caused sometimes by external situations, and I know it looks like your unhappiness and fear sometimes is caused by other people and events and situations and circumstances. But of course, in Miracles says that when you realize that all guilt, all fear, all unhappiness is, a, is solely an invention of your mind, you will also realize that your guilt or your unhappiness or your fear and your healing and your happiness and your innocence, your salvation must be in the same place. So what is it that will save you? What is it that will give you peace and joy in understanding this? Understanding what? Understanding that my happiness is in my mind, my unhappiness is in my mind. All of my fear is coming from thoughts, feelings, and emotions and beliefs in my mind. And all of the love and the joy and the peace that a person experiences is also coming from the same place, which is in your own mind. Believe me, it is to your advantage. It is to your advantage if your happiness comes from you and it's in your own mind. And it's really to your benefit if, if your sickness or unhappiness or anything that you're going through is actually coming from your own mind. So what is it going to cost you to accept today's idea? What is it going to cause you to accept today's idea that your happiness comes from you? Your happiness comes from you. Your salvation comes from you. Your right-mindedness comes from you. What is it going to cost you to accept that that's true? Well, if your happiness comes from you, your abundance comes from you, your peace comes from you, the, the relationships that you have and the way they are, if that comes from you, then the seeming cause of accepting this idea is this. Nothing outside yourself can save you. Nothing outside yourself can save you. Nothing outside yourself can give you peace. Nothing outside yourself can give you peace. What? Nothing outside yourself can give you peace. 
Nothing outside yourself can give you peace. Nothing outside yourself can save you. Nothing outside you can give you peace. And nothing outside yourself can save you. Nothing outside yourself can hurt you. What? Nothing outside yourself can hurt you. Now, do you necessarily believe that that is true? Do you necessarily believe that nothing outside yourself can save you and nothing outside yourself can give you peace and that nothing outside yourself uh, can hurt you? Uh, no, you might not believe that, but do you know that it doesn't really make any difference whether you believe something that's true? Because if something is true, it's going to be true whether you believe it or not. Gravity is going to be true whether you believe in gravity or not. So the truth is, nothing outside yourself can hurt you, nothing outside yourself can give you peace, and nothing outside yourself can save you. Uh, if you accept that your happiness and your peace and your joy, do you know that if you accept that your happiness and peace and joy come from you, then that means that you also recognize that nothing outside you also realize that nothing outside yourself can give you peace and nothing outside yourself can hurt you. Nothing outside yourself can disturb your peace. Nothing outside yourself can upset you in any way. So are you saying, Taurus and Miracles, are you saying to me that whenever I'm upset, it's not being caused by, it's not being caused by anything outside of myself? Are you saying to me, Taurus and Miracles, that whenever I experience any kind of disturbance, of my peace, that that's not coming from anything or anyone outside of me? No. So if your unhappiness, if your unhappiness is not coming from anywhere and from anything outside of you, now we could analyze that, we could debate that, but that's not the point. The point of the exercises is to hear what the Course in Miracles is saying and then do what the Course in Miracles is saying do in order to get the result that you want. So my, my presentations are more focused on the application of the ideas so that, so that you can get what you want, more so than trying to get you to figure out every little thing that the Course in Miracles is saying. Because your understanding is not a powerful contribution to the truth, and your understanding isn't what makes something work and makes it true. But if the truth is that nothing outside you can disturb your peace and that nothing outside you can upset you, and if it's true that nothing outside you, uh, you can save you, if it's true that your happiness and your unhappiness is in your own mind and in your own thinking, then the Course says then that would place you in charge of the universe, your personal universe. You're in charge of, you're in charge of the universe. You belong in charge of your universe because of what you are. Now, you being in charge of your universe, you being in charge of your happiness, your peace, your salvation, that's not a role that you can partially accept. Does that mean that you cannot accept that you're in charge partially? No, you can accept that you're in charge partially. You are totally and completely responsible for the thoughts that are in your mind. You are totally and completely responsible for the beliefs that you have. You're totally and completely responsible for any ideas of guilt or innocence that you have in your mind or any ideas of anger or peace that you have in your mind. You cannot accept that role partially. So either you're in charge of your mind and the way your mind thinks and the way your mind believes completely, or you're not. And you must surely begin to see that if you were to accept that you're in charge of the way you feel and that you give everything all the meaning that it has for you and that you're acting out your own beliefs, then you would understand what accepting salvation, which is your peace and your right-mindedness and your innocence is. So when the court says you're in charge of the universe, the course is talking about you're in charge of what's in your mind. You are in charge of what you believe. You are in charge of what you accept is true. And guilt or innocence, your happiness or, un or unhappiness is coming from the thoughts in your own mind. And if everything that's making you feel the way you feel is coming from your own mind, then that means nothing outside yourself can save you. Nothing outside yourself can give you peace. And nothing outside yourself can hurt you. And nothing outside yourself can disturb your peace or upset you in any way. 
That's what the course means when it says you are in charge. Now, <clears throat> do you know it? Do you know it may not, however, be clear to you? It may not be clear to you why the recognition that guilt or fear or unhappiness is in your own mind. But do you know that if you were to recognize that everything that makes you unhappy is in your own mind, then you would also have the realization that your, your happiness, your salvation, and your innocence, and your peace must also be in your mind. You don't want your life set up to believe that if somebody else spoke or acted differently, if something outside of yourself was were different, then you would be happy. Because every time you make your happiness dependent on somebody or something outside yourself, that puts you at their mercy and that puts them or something outside of you in charge of your happiness and you don't want to do that. So, so, so I would advise that you would be happy about the idea that you're in charge because however you feel and however you are experiencing things is coming from your own fault, beliefs, and your own mind. That's great. Because even if right now you're unhappy or miserable in some way, then that means you are in a position to have that change. But if your unhappiness is based on what somebody else says or does or something outside of yourself, then you've got to try to control everything and everybody outside of you in order to be happy. And you know that's not going to work. Today's idea places you in charge of the universe and you belong in charge of your universe because of what you are. You cannot accept the role of being in charge of your universe partially, but you must surely begin to see that accepting that your happiness comes from you and your unhappiness comes from you, is your salvation. But then it says, you know what? It might not, however, be clear to you why the recognition that guilt and unhappiness is in your own mind also entails the realization that your salvation and your happiness and your right-mindedness is also in your own mind. What is it that I would like for you to think of? I would like for you to think of the fact that the creator would not have put the remedy for the sickness where the remedy couldn't help. So the creator would never have put the remedy for your unhappiness where the remedy cannot help. Because that's the way your mind works. See, the Course in Miracles says your mind tells you all the time if somebody else spoke or acted differently, if somebody else behaved differently, if somebody else did what you wanted them to do, then you would be happy. Uh, but see, since your happiness or unhappiness is coming from your own thinking, then God wouldn't put the remedy where the remedy couldn't help. And if God put the remedy in the outside world, but the remedy is actually has to be a change in your perception and a change of your own thinking, then God wouldn't have put the remedy on the outside where it can't help you. That's the way our, <clears throat> that's the way our wrong mindedness works. Our wrong mindedness is always trying to figure out who and what we can manipulate out there in the world so that we can be happy, right? And that's not the way the creator's mind works. That's not the way God works according to the course. So the first thing you need to accept, what is the first thing you need to accept? You need to accept at some point that God wants you to be healed. Your creator wants you to be healed. Love, which is another name for God, love wants you to be healed. So if your creator wants you to be healed, if your creator wants you to be healed, then don't you think that the creator would have kept the source of your healing where the need for the healing lies? So where is it that the healing needs to happen? Well, if everything you experience is coming from your own thoughts, feelings, emotions, and beliefs, then you need to put the healing where the cause of the healing is. And the cause of the healing is in you. The cause of the way you think and feel is coming from you. The thoughts that you are acting from, your conditioning, your programming, it's all coming from you. But you need to accept 
that your creator wants you to be healed, to be happy. There is no such thing as a punishing God that wants, you, that wants to make you suffer, to make you do right. The Courts and Miracles teaches that our creator is an unconditionally loving creator that wants to heal every unhappiness and every lack and every fear and every sickness and every guilt that we have. But all of that is coming from our own thoughts, our own mind. So we need to put the healing where the sickness is. The sickness is in the mind. So the healing must also be in the mind. Now, what have we tried to do? We've tried to do just the opposite. We've tried to make every attempt, however distorted, however fantastic it might be, we made every attempt to separate the healing that we want to have from the sickness or unhappiness for which it was intended. In other words, the Course says, there's a part of us that tries to keep the sickness, and the Course in Miracles defines sickness as any form of lack of peace, any form of anger, guilt, grievances, lack, separation, attack. That's sickness. And as long as you keep looking for anything and everybody outside of yourself to be different for you to be happy, then you are separating the sickness from the healing. Do you know that there is a part of you that doesn't think very highly of you if you're going through a lot of unhappiness and misery and lack? That means there is some part of your mind that's not wishing you well. So there's a part of you that has the purpose of ensuring that your healing and your happiness doesn't occur. So anybody that's unhappy, it's not God that's causing their unhappiness. It's not anything or anybody outside of themselves that's causing their unhappiness. When a person is unhappy and miserable and alone and lonely, it's because some part of them does not believe that they deserve to be happy, that they deserve to be prosperous, that they deserve to have love and to be connected in oneness. Don't sweat it, though. Why is it that you don't need to sweat it? Because God's purpose was to ensure that your healing does occur. Listen to me. Get rid of that stupid idea that your creator wants you to suffer and that your creator is somehow or another punishing you or attacking you or wanting to hurt you. Love doesn't do that. Real love doesn't do that. So your creator, listen to me now, your creator's purpose is to ensure that your happiness and your peace does occur. There is no possibility that someone who really and truly wants to experience happiness will not experience that happiness if they are willing to do it the way that the truth in, is telling you to do it. It's not that you have to be unhappy. You're unhappy because you're still listening to yourself, your little self, your small self, the little you that was programmed by the world. The part that doesn't know the truth has been guiding you. And if the part of you that doesn't know the truth is the part of you that you're listening to, you will know it because you will be full of worry. You'll be full of concern. You'll have anger. You'll be lonely. You'll be broke. That means you need to stop listening to what you are telling yourself because what you're telling yourself is not true. So now we're ready for our practice, right? And what we're going to do is jump down uh, and I want you to start practicing what I'm about to share with you, what I'm about to teach you from A Course in Miracles. So one thing that you need to do if you want to change and start to have the kind of peace and joy and happiness and the change of mind that's necessary for you to have peace and joy and happiness, you need to decide in advance when would be a good time to lay aside for you to do your practices. So I'm, I'm telling you the way out of sadness, misery, sickness, upset, loneliness, and lack. You're going to have to do some stuff, okay? You're going to have to put forth some effort. Effort in the sense that you need to lay aside a period of time that you are going to do your practice that I'm about to give you, and you need to adhere to that decision. And you need to do it as much as possible when you say you're going to do it. Before I start my day every day, I read The Course in Miracles and I study The Course in Miracles even though I've read The whole Course in Miracles from cover to cover over a hundred times easily. And I've been a teacher of it for over four decades. You know why? Because it works. What? It works. 
when you actually do what the Course in Miracles tells you to do, when you actually use the perceptions and the thoughts that the Course in Miracles tells you to use, and you're not spending all your time analyzing it, and you actually just do what you're being told, then I found that people get the peaceful result that the Course in Miracles practices and preaches and, and tells you about, the results that the Course in Miracles promises. So you begin by repeating the idea for today. See, very specific instruction. What is the first thing that you should do? Repeat the idea for today. My salvation comes from me. Now, when it says salvation, it's not talking about the traditional Christian idea of salvation. The Course in Miracles defines salvation as right-mindedness, forgiveness, uh, peace, love, freedom. Uh, so therefore, you, so you can say, uh, it says one of the definitions of salvation is right-mindedness. The happiness comes from right-mindedness. So the first thing you do is you repeat the idea for today. My salvation comes from me. My, and just substitute the word happiness for salvation or peace for salvation and go, my peace comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. My peace comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. My peace comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. My peace comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. My happiness comes from me. It can't come from anywhere else. My happiness comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. My happiness comes from me. My happiness comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. My salvation comes from me. My salvation cannot come from anywhere else. The Course in Miracles says you need to repeat this. Don't analyze this. Just repeat this. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to welcome it. You can resist it. You can find it hard to believe. It can startle you. That's okay. That doesn't matter. You know, nobody's asking you to analyze and judge this anyway. We, the Course in Miracles is saying if you want to have that happiness and that peace and that joy that comes from you, then you need to use these ideas. And if you use the ideas, what's going to happen? If you use the ideas, then the ideas will show you that the ideas are true. So what is the first thing that we're being told to do? <clears throat> the idea for today, repeat it. My salvation comes from me. My peace comes from me. Then it says, adding a statement signifying your recognition that your salvation, your peace, and your happiness comes from nothing outside of you. So you want to go, my salvation comes from me, my happiness comes from me, my abundance comes from me, my peace comes from me, my freedom comes from me, forgiveness comes from me, it can't come from anywhere else. Now what is the advantage of knowing that your happiness cannot come from anything outside your own mind and your own self? The advantage is you stop looking for your happiness where it is not located, right? If my car is in the garage downstairs and I'm looking for my car in the parking lot of the grocery store, then I'm never going to find my car because my car is not in the parking lot at the grocery store. My car is in the garage in the basement. So if you're looking for your happiness where it is not located, it's the same as looking for your car that's in the basement and you're looking for it in a parking lot at a grocery store. So every time you think a person outside of you is going to ultimately give you all the happiness and peace that you want, whenever you think anything in this world outside of you is going to be the source of your happiness, then you are looking for your happiness and peace where it is not located. So what do you do? Well, after you say, my salvation comes from me, it cannot come from anywhere else. Let's say it, my salvation comes from me, it can't come from anywhere else. My happiness comes from me, it cannot come from anywhere else. My happiness comes from me, it cannot come from anywhere else. My innocence comes from me, it cannot come from anywhere else. My, my innocence comes from me, it cannot come from anywhere else. My freedom comes from me, it cannot come from anywhere else. My health comes from me, it cannot come from anywhere else. My oneness comes from me, it cannot come from anywhere else. You're just being asked to repeat that. Then what do you do next? The next thing you do is you devote a few minutes with your eyes closed. So if you're in a position right now to close your eyes, this is what I, what, this is what I want you to do. You know what I want you to do after you close your eyes? I want you to review some of the external places where you've looked for happiness in the past. I want you to think about 
those times when you look for happiness in other people, when you look for happiness in a, in, in a boyfriend, in a girlfriend, in a wife, in a husband, in a boss, in a coworker, in a relative, in a friend. I want you to think about all those times in the past that you look for love in somebody else, something outside of yourself. Or I want you to also think about those times when you look for your happiness in possessions. When you, when, you, when you were so sure if you got that new refrigerator, you were going to be happy. You were so sure when you got that new car, you were going to be permanently happy. When you were sure you, when you got that flat screen TV, you were going to be happy. When you were sure that when you got that new pair of pants, you were going to be happy. I want you to think about all the ways that you have been looking for happiness all your life. All the different situations that you were looking for happiness in, all the different events that you thought were, was were, that you thought was going to make you happy and make you happy forever, and I want you to think about even the concepts of yourself that you thought would make you happy. Uh, the Course in Miracles says, recognize that your happiness wasn't there because from a Course in Miracles perspective, anything that's real is permanent. Anything that's real is permanent. Anything that's true is permanent. Anything that's real is permanent. Anything that's real is permanent. What is real is permanent. What is real is permanent. What is real does not leave. What is real does not go. What is real does not change. What is real is always there. What is real, you can always depend on. And the only thing that's going to ever make a person really, really happy is a, ha is a love they can depend on, is a freedom they can depend on, is a God they can depend on, is a love that they can depend on, or a truth that you can depend on. So what do you do if you want to begin to really have that happiness that comes from you? Well, tell yourself. That's what it says right here. Recognize your happiness isn't there. And then I want you to tell yourself, tell yourself, my happiness cannot come from any of these things. My happiness comes from me and only from me. Tell yourself, my salvation can't come from any of these things. Salvation is the same as right-mindedness, love, peace, joy, happiness, the truth. Tell yourself, if you think about all the things and all the people and all the situations and all the circumstances that you thought was going to absolutely give you the kind of joy that you wanted and it did maybe temporarily because one of the things you can always tell when you're dealing with something that's not coming from God or something that's not coming from love is because anything that's not coming from God, do you know that anything that's not coming from God, do you know that anything that's not coming from love is going to always be something that's temporary? It's going to be something that doesn't last. It's going to be something that is not permanent. So I don't care how beautiful that sunset is, that sunset is going to change. That sunset is not going to last. So the happiness that you feel when you're looking at a beautiful sunset, that happiness is not coming from the sunset. The happiness is coming from the meaning that you're giving the sunset from within your own mind. So that happiness that you're having about the sunset is coming from your own mind. If you are really happy with somebody in a relationship, and you think that your happiness is coming from that person, and you think your happiness is coming from what that person is doing, you are absolutely, totally, and completely 100% wrong from A Course in Miracles truth perspective. The truth is that person is not making you happy. You're making yourself happy by what you're telling yourself and feeling toward that person. So your happiness is coming from you. Your feelings are coming from you. Your joy is coming. You enjoying that television, not because that television is making you feel good. You are enjoying that television because of what you're telling yourself about the television. It's coming from your thoughts. It's coming from your own mind. So tell yourself, after you think about and review the things that you think make you happy, in terms of possessions or situations or people or circumstances that you put your faith in. Remind yourself that your salvation cannot come from any of these things. My happiness cannot come from anything outside. My, ha my happiness doesn't come from anything outside. Your happiness doesn't come from anything outside yourself. Your happiness doesn't come from anything outside yourself. You, you can be happy with the things that you see outside yourself by being happy in your own mind, peaceful in your own mind, having loving, right, correct thoughts in your own mind. So that means that your salvation and your happiness comes only from you, and it comes from you, and only from you. Now, you can spend years and years and years running around trying to 
make things happen in a way that makes you happy outside of yourself. And you may give yourself some temporary happiness and temporary success from doing that, but you will not be giving yourself the permanent happiness that the creator wants you to have, that love wants you to have. You're innocent. You can think that car is going to do it. You can think that degree is going to do it. You can think losing 10 pounds is going to do it. You can think that you can think all those things. You're totally and completely innocent because God, the love that created you is not upset with you or going to punish you for wanting anything in this world. But if you really want to be happy, you need to recognize that your peace and happiness cannot come from any of these things, that your peace and happiness, your salvation is going to come from you and only from you. So what are we going to try again? Well, the Course in Miracles says, now we will try again to reach the light, to reach the love, to reach the truth in you. Because your salvation and your healing is in reaching that light in you that truth in you, that love in you. That's where your peace is. That's where your happiness is. It's in reaching that light in you, that peace in you, that love in you. You can't find it in the clouds. You can't find, it. You can't find that happiness in the clouds that surround the light. When you, It was cloudy here in Denver yesterday, and the sun was still shining, but we couldn't see it because it was what? Behind the clouds. And the clouds are hiding the light, but it doesn't mean the light doesn't exist. Your clouds, your fear, your guilt, your anger, your upset, these things are clouds and they hide the light in you, the peace in you, the truth in you. So you can't find it in the clouds that surround the light, but you've been looking for your happiness in the clouds. If you look for your happiness and you think some person is going to make you happy all the time, or some situation or circumstance outside yourself is going to make you happy all the time, or that a new location is going to necessarily make you happy all the time, then that's the same as looking in the clouds and not going directly to the light, the truth that is in you, that mind that's in you, that's determining how you feel about everything and how you see everything. So where is your happiness? Where is your peace? Well, in that analogy of the sun and the clouds, you could say that your happiness is past the clouds and in the light or the sun that's beyond the clouds. So if I really want if my happiness is really in the sun, but I'm looking for my happiness in the clouds, then I need to go past the clouds to the sun, right? So if you believe that your happiness is in everything that is outside of yourself, that, but that's the clouds, then you got to go past that belief to the truth that the happiness and the peace and the joy and the bliss that you're looking for is actually in you and in your mind. So what is it that you need to remember? You got to remember that you have to go through the clouds before you can reach the light. When an airplane takes off, it goes through the clouds. Have you ever, have you ever flown somewhere and it was raining down on the ground? And then you got in the plane and it took off and then you went through the clouds and then you were up in the light. Well, that's what you've got to do on your spiritual path. You've got to go through and pass all the programming and negative fearful programming that you've learned and taught yourself from the world. You're going to have to go beyond that to the truth that the Course is teaching you right now. So you have to go through the clouds before you reach the light. You could say you have to go through fear to love. You go through your guilt to innocence. You go through your feeling of bondage to freedom. You go through whatever ideas you have of poverty and lack to abundance. You have to go through past your ego to get to the Holy Spirit or God. You got to go past it. You can't spend your time in the cloud, analyzing the cloud, focusing on the cloud. You got to go past the cloud through the cloud to the sun. So stop analyzing your guilt and analyzing your fear and analyzing your lacks and analyzing your relationships and analyzing what you think is the problem and go past it to the solution and to the answer. And what is it that we are receiving right now? We are receiving the way to do this. How do you do it? Well, first of all, repeat the idea to yourself. My salvation comes from me. My peace comes from me. That's, that's where you start. It can't, you tell yourself, my peace and my happiness comes from me, and it can't come from anywhere else. What is the next thing you do? 
You think about all the times you put your faith in something or someone outside yourself and it didn't work and you didn't get the kind of happiness or long-term payoff that you wanted. So what do you do? You tell yourself, my salvation cannot come from any of these things. My happiness cannot come from any of these things. My happiness comes from me. My salvation, my peace, my joy comes from me and only from me. Do you know I could tell you something that's mind-boggling? The once you tap into that happiness and joy and peace inside your own mind, then you will start to see it reflected back to you through the people and situations and circumstances that are attracted to you and that you perceive in your physical life. People have become so friendly to me everywhere I go that it's almost eerie. I don't care what race they are. I don't care what ethnic group they are. I don't care how old they are. I don't care how young they are. I'm noticing more and more that people are being friendly. They're smiling at me. They're greeting me. I was on an elevator going up to my apartment one day, and I'm on the eighth floor. And this young lady got on the elevator, and she grabbed me and just hugged me. And she was in a white body to add a little more juice to it. And she hugged me. And she put her head on my chest and just hugged me until she got to the floor that she was going to. And then she got off the elevator without even saying a word. Uh, I went out to dancing the other night. And this guy came up to me and he just walked up to me and he grabbed me on both sides of my jaw. And he says, oh, man, you're just so cool. I just I feel the love radiating from me, man. You're a great guy. And this was, again, a being in a white body that was a male who looked like he could have been a country western singer. And that's the way that he approached me. Uh, I've had that happen several times, but the Course in Miracles promised that that would happen. It told me that as I changed my mind and recognized my happiness comes from me, and that it's only been my own thoughts that's been creating the upsets and the pains that I've been going through, and if I would do what it would tell me to do, then it said that my world would start to reflect back to me love, that the people in my world that seems to be, even those that seem to be strangers, would start to reflect love back to me. And it happens. But you know why it happens? It happens because I'm a friggin' fanatic about studying A Course in Miracles and doing what it says as best I can and applying it to my experience as best I can rather than sitting back and analyzing and debating what it's saying and what it means. So remember that you've never found anything in the cloud patterns that you were imagining that, that lasted or that you wanted. You've never found any friggin' thing in this entire world since the time you were a child that the happiness that you were experiencing from that thing did not end at some point and you immediately wanted something else. If you would be honest with yourself, you know, you will know that you know that what I'm saying is true, that we're all excited and happy when we first get what we think we want. And then before long, now we got to have something new. Now I got to have something different. And then I'll be happy. That's the clouds. That's the cloud patterns. So since all of your false ideas, what, what have all your false ideas of happiness done? Well, what is a false idea of happiness? Well, a false idea of happiness is my belief that my happiness is coming from someone and something being different or changing themselves or changing itself in order for me to be happy. So the Course in Miracles says, that has failed you. And you don't want to remain, do you? You don't want to remain in the clouds. You don't want to remain in the fear. You don't want to remain in the loneliness, do you? You don't want to remain in the lack. You don't want to remain in the sickness. You don't want to remain in the boredom, looking vainly for idols, Idols are just false ideas and false beliefs that we have about what's real and what will make us happy. You don't want to keep looking for happiness, do you? You don't want to keep looking for your peace and happiness where it's not located, do you? Do you know that you could easily walk into the light of real happiness and real salvation and real feeling? You could easily walk into light and love. Do you know that you can easily walk into light and love so try to pass the clouds, try to pass the fears, try to pass the separation, try to pass the old beliefs that you have. 
By whatever means appeals to you, try to pass the ego, try to pass the fear, try to pass the anger, try to pass the unhappiness and frustration that you might be going through right now about something in your life. And do you know that if it helps, do you know that if it helps, I want you to think of me holding your hand. I want you to think of me holding your hand right now and leading you. It's what Jesus of the Course in Miracles says. I want you to think of me. Think of me. Think of me holding your hand. Think, think of the higher power holding your hand. And do you know, I will assure you that this is not an idle fantasy. You are not walking alone. If you knew who was walking beside you on this road that you're on right now, it would be impossible for you to be unhappy and afraid. If you really knew that God is with you, the higher power is with you, if you really knew the universe is with you, if you really knew who was walking with you right now, it would be impossible for you to be afraid. It would be impossible for you to be unhappy. So what you want to do, what is it you want to do? You want to have very short and very frequent practice periods. So what does that mean? It means every time you get a Every time you get a chance, you, go, you tell yourself, my happiness comes for me in this situation. If you're in a situation where you're upset with somebody and you don't know what to do and you're feeling afraid and you're getting angry and you're feeling frustration, tell yourself, my salvation comes for me in this situation. My peace comes for me in this situation. My peace comes for me in this situation. My, peace, really, my real peace is going to come from me. My real happiness is going to come from me. My salvation is going to come from me. And I need to remind myself right now while I'm dealing with this situation, while I'm dealing with this kid, while I'm dealing with this situation, I need to remind myself that my happiness is going to come from me. The resolution is going to come from me. This answer is going to come from within me. So what is another thing you need to tell yourself if you want to have happiness? Well, another thing that you need to tell you, I'm glad I'm huggable. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joanne. I'm glad that you see it that way because you are huggable too. You are huggable too. You are huggable too. Um, remind yourself that your happiness and salvation comes from you. Whenever you have a moment and you're quiet, tell yourself that nothing but your own thoughts can hamper your progress. So, so if I'm sitting, if I'm sitting somewhere waiting, I, I tell myself some of the things that the Course in Miracles tells me to tell myself. Like, all right, it's nothing but my own thoughts that can hamper my progress. The only thing that's hampering my progress in this situation is my own thoughts. The only thing that's hampering my progress in this relationship is my own thoughts. The only thing that's hampering my progress in healing my separation from God is my own thoughts. My own thoughts, that's what's hampering my progress. I'm not feeling love right now. I am not feeling love right now because uh, my own thoughts are hampering my progress. So would you be willing to say these things that I'm saying from A Course in Miracles, whether you believe it or not? But remember, if it's the truth, it's the truth, whether you believe it or not. So what is the truth? Well, he says it in the next part of the paragraph. You are free from all external interference. What do you mean that I'm free from all external interference? Well, let me give you an example. Right now, I'm being told to tell myself that my salvation, my healing, my peace comes from me. And it's not coming from anywhere else. Well, there's nobody stopping me from saying that right now. There's nothing to stop me from telling myself my peace and happiness comes from me right now. I am free from all external interference. You are free from all external interference. There's nothing on the outer. There's nothing on the outer that's stopping you from telling yourself the things that the Course is telling you to tell yourself. You are in charge. What is it that you are in charge of? You are in charge of your salvation. You are in charge of your peace. You are in charge of your abundance. You are in charge of your salvation. But you're also in charge of the salvation of the world. You're also in charge of the healing of the world because you are going to see the world through your mind. So if, when you change your mind about the world, you will see another world. You won't see another world by trying to change the world. You won't see another world by trying to change the world. You will see another world by changing your mind about the world. You will change your, wor you will change your world by the thoughts you are thinking about the world and the thoughts that you are sending out into the world. 
you're in charge of the healing of the world in the sense that you are the one that's determining the world you see and how you see the world. So what should you say? What should you say? Notice that I'm putting the emphasis on the practical application of the ideas of A Course in Miracles. And that's what's going to be my emphasis uh, for the foreseeable future. That my focus is going to be on uh, the divine repetition, the re repeating what it's telling us to do, uh, helping you and me remember what we're being told to do, and us actually doing it together. Because that's what's going to give you the result that you're looking for. So what is it that you need to say? You need to say, my salvation comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's salvation and my own. So you could say it this way. My happiness comes from me. Nothing outside me can hold me back. Within me is the world's happiness and my own. Or you could say love. My love comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's love and my own. Or you could say my freedom comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's freedom and my own. Or you could say, my abundance comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's abundance and my own. See, we are, we are being given very specific things to say to allow that block, those clouds, to be transcended. Because we are trying to go past the ego. We're trying to go past our pro programming. We're not going to analyze. You don't... You know what I'm saying? You don't go through the trash that's in your wastebasket. You just throw it away and go on about your business. So please stop analyzing the trash thoughts, the fear thoughts, the guilt thoughts, the anger thoughts. Stop analyzing those thoughts and just do what you're told by spirit to go past that sadness and unhappiness to get to the happiness that you're in. I'm going to, I'm, so we're going to work this exercise as a recap right at the, right after I give you a few messages, okay? I'm a full-time teacher. I'm a full-time teacher. I'm a full-time teacher of A Course in Miracles. If you'd like to make a financial expression of support and appreciation, you can go to my website, www.earlperdy.com P-U-R-D-Y earlperdy.com You can also use Venmo, the Cash App, PayPal, or Zelle. All you need is my email address. My email address. My email address. What is my email address? earlperdy at earlperdy.com earlperdy at earlperdy.com Dot com. That's all you need. I'm also available for coaching, counseling, and mentoring and showing you exactly how to apply what the Course in Miracles is teaching to any situation that you're going through right now that you need clarity on or that you're going through some type of pain and you're ready for it to be over. I call my personal sessions, my one-on-one -on -one sessions, I call them clarity sessions. So you can book a clarity session with me by going to my website and it will explain all the details about it and you can self book an appointment with me right online from my website. I'm also a professional astrologer and numerologist. So those of you who are open minded to receiving information that can be very helpful because spirit communicates to us through everything, then I can also be helpful in that way. Now, guess what? Uh, on Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook, I do another Facebook Live on A Course in Miracles. And if you're in Denver, Colorado, then you can come and attend in person with me also. I'm doing it at 1555 Race Street. 1555 Race, R-A-C-E, Race Street in Denver, Colorado, 80206. Love to see you in person as well as online. 
On Thursdays, only online is Hardcore Course in Miracles at 7 p.m. on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. And please share these videos. Please make people aware of these online classes that I'm doing. And all of my classes are also posted on YouTube. So I have hundreds of classes on YouTube. So people don't have to necessarily be, be on Facebook in order to watch and listen to the classes on A Course in Miracles that I do. I'm so grateful to you. I appreciate you so much. So that's Thursday, 7 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. And I have tons of classes on YouTube as well as on Facebook. Okay, so let's, let's wrap this up. Are you ready? Take a breath. Are you ready? Are you going to do it with me? You And watch this and listen to it at least four times. All right? Are you ready? Here we go. And also, send me some comments and let me know what you appreciate about what I do and how I do it and how you benefit from it. I see all your comments. I read all your comments. Thank you for coming to the live presentation. Here we go. Tell yourself this. My happiness comes from me. 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 It cannot come from anywhere else. My happiness comes from me. It can't come from anywhere else. Your happiness, your salvation comes from you. It cannot come from anywhere else. It cannot come from anywhere else. Your happiness comes from you. It cannot come from anywhere else. Your happiness comes from you. It cannot come from anywhere else. Your health, your salvation, which is your happiness, which is your right-mindedness, it comes from you. My happiness comes from me. My happiness comes from me. My peace comes from me. My peace comes from me. My joy comes from me. My joy comes from me. My wealth comes from me. My wealth comes from me. Forgiveness, my forgiveness, my forgiveness comes from me. It cannot come from anywhere else. So if you're in a situation, and in that situation you're expecting somebody else to speak or act differently in order for you to be happy, you need to catch yourself. You need to catch yourself. And you need to catch yourself and you need to say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm thinking that this person is in control of my happiness, that this situation is in control of my happiness, that my boss is in control of my happiness, that my co-workers in control of my happiness, that my friends and family, my mate is in control of my happiness. Uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. I'm going to remember my salvation comes from me. My right-mindedness comes from me. My peace comes from me. My joy comes from me. And it can't come from anywhere else. It can't come from anywhere else. Then tell yourself, when you think about the things that you think you want, that you think are going to make you permanently happy, permanently happy. Tell yourself, my salvation cannot come from any of these things. My peace and my happiness cannot come from any of these things. My salvation, my peace and happiness comes from me and only from me. Your salvation, your happiness comes from you and only from you. You got to go past the clouds. You got to go past the ego. And then the other thing that we were told to say to ourselves, there are specific instructions. My salvation comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. My salvation comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's salvation and my own. If you have that lesson and you have it right before you right now, say that with me. My salvation comes from me. 
Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's salvation and my own. Your salvation comes from you. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. Within you is the world's salvation and your own. You could say it this way. My happiness comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's happiness and my own. Let me say it for you. Your happiness comes from you. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. Within you is the world's salvation and your own. Your happiness comes from you. Nothing outside you can hold you back. Within you is the world's happiness and your own. One more time. Um, let me say it for you because I'm happy for you. I believe it. Here we go. Your salvation comes from you. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. Within you is the world's salvation and your own. Your peace and happiness comes from you. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. Nothing outside of you. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. No one outside of you can hold you back. Within you, within you is the world's healing and happiness in your own. So tell yourself, salvation is another word for healing. Say, my healing comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's healing and my own. My healing comes from me. Nothing outside of me can hold me back. Within me is the world's salvation and my own. Take a breath with me. 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 I'm so blessed. You are so blessed. And I'm glad that my happiness doesn't depend on anyone or anything outside of myself. Your salvation comes from you. Your peace comes from you. The God that loves you, that tapping into that comes from you. Your light comes from you. Your light comes from you. Your happiness comes from you. Your happiness comes from you. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. I say your happiness comes from you. Your happiness comes from you. Your happiness comes from you. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. Within you is the world's healing and salvation and your own. Mighty Companions, this is your mighty companion, Earl Raj Purdy. Are you ready? Are you ready to have your happiness? Are you ready to know your happiness? So stop saying if this was different, if this were different, I would be happy if they were different. I would be happy if this were different. That's the plan that will not work. Remind yourself that you're in charge of your universe. Remind yourself that you have a kingdom that you must rule. And that kingdom that you must rule is your own mind, your own consciousness. And give yourself to the higher power. Give yourself to the Holy Spirit because spirit comes from you. Your spirit comes from you. Nothing outside of you can hold you back. And within you, within you is the world's healing and you your own. Mighty Companions, this is Earl Purdy. Thank you for tuning in. And be sure to watch this at least four times. Mighty Companions, may the course be with you. I love you.